Um, I'd like to speak about three things today. They are um, what we do with Open edX as a very small shop. Um, I'd like to also speak about a little bit about engagement, the idea of engagement, and also about um, our company, since you've probably never heard of us. Um, as you might know, um, engagement is a significant problem for high school students. Uh, reports come out all the time, and uh, the recent uh, report in 2009 said that 65% of high school students are bored, and the reason for the boredom is the material. Gallup did a poll just last fall, 2015, that came up with the same number. 65% of high school students are bored. And as you see from the graph, it gets worse after the fifth grade. Our view of engagement is that engagement is absolutely a complex and very personal experience. It's one that is com made of a couple of different components. Those components and the combination change from person to person, topic to topic, course to course, year to year, school level to school level. There are a lot of people who are trying different initiatives and experiments all along the education value chain from the strategic end to the managerial end to the daily day operational end. Um, but still, as we saw, even in fall of 2015, challenges still persist with regards to engagement. Friends of Equal Opportunity is involved in three primary activities. We do theoretical cognitive neuroscience, education policy reform, and open educational resource advocacy and support. I created FEOEF in 1998 as a forum for alumni and administrators at Harvard. Um, in 2008, I discovered the open courseware idea from MIT and started to immediately incorporate courses from multiple universities onto one site. Um, and not only universities, but other open source providers. We include both textbooks, courses, uh, assignments, discussion forums, database-driven discussion forums and all that. And in 2014, while at Harvard, I discovered that they could give me the link to the source code. So we immediately created our version of Open edX, of our free learning channel using the Open edX platform. Our primary focus, as I mentioned, is really middle school, high school, and the first year of college. We're trying to provide a smooth on-ramp both in terms of content and in terms of students getting used to using an edX-like system. Our, we endeavor to try to make the user interface as clean and simple and straightforward as possible. We have two free learning channels. I wrote one, actually, in a hotel in Manila uh, on a laptop. Um, we've gotten a lot more busy since then, but we have two free learning channels, free learning channel and free learning channel X. Our free learning channel X looks like, the home page looks like this. The, we provide normal course descriptions. We curate open source materials to produce courses and textbooks. We have a very de um, uh, standard space approach. In other words, we like to identify who, who are we trying to help? What are the authorizing bodies that control what they're supposed to learn? What are the detailed standards that they are supposed to supply, uh, satisfy? And then what textbooks align to that? What courses align to that? How can we build exercises for that? And then we build that. And when, so we have exercises that we can build within edX or external to edX. Now remember, we have two websites. It's important for us to not do the same work twice, but I'll get to that a little later. The, um, when we can't find open source materials that already align fairly well by our standards, we will build original content. Our basic content development principles are um, develop content once, put it in one place, and access it from there. From however many number of websites we decide to go, I know some people do Coursera, edX, Canvas. In our case, we host the, the information, the content in one place, and then we refer to it within edX or within our free learning channel. Loosely coupled and highly cohesive. If you're a software developer, you know what that means. We tend to see edX really as a content delivery system, not so much as a content development system. That's just because we come from already having a platform, so, and we already have tools to do that. Um, with regards to maximize potential reuse, we tend to try to develop our content in very discrete units that we can then later modify and repurpose. 
and with regards to agile and continuous improvement. Um, we develop content, deliver that content, go back, look at it again, see if we can do a better job, deliver that. So we use a very iterative process. Here's a copy of what our static web page content developer looks like. We have our own. It is very similar to the one embedded in edX. So we use that to produce course descriptions of very static data. With regards to dynamic web page data, we use time-based animation tools like if you're familiar with things like After Effects or a Flash or Adobe Edge Animate and that sort of thing, we use those tools to do animated content. We like those because we can later go in and modify that and take one unit and maybe modify it and it'll be ready for another unit. With regards to the kinds of content we've used over the last seven or eight years, this gives you a flavor for the kinds of things we use for each of the different development components. And again, you can see this uh, on the video later if you review it. I won't go through each one of these pieces. But um, we have two platforms. We, develop, um, we developed an open edX platform locally. In other words, we, ha we have it running on our systems. And we use that to get acquainted with open edX and to learn it. And then now, because we, we've learned some of it, we use that uh, for development and testing. And this just gives you an example. I've developed it, I've installed Open edX 16 times on PCs, Macs, and Ubuntu-based machines. And I've installed, I've created two internet-facing websites using a standard third-party web hoster. And this website, which is Microsoft Azure-based, as it turns out, if you are a Visual Studio subscriber, Microsoft has a lot of great programs out there. And one of them is, uh, for everybody, you get a 30-day trial of Open edX. You can try it and do anything you want for 30 days. The second issue is that if you're a Visual Studio provider, they'll give you a $50 credit. Well, the system we use to host edX only costs $55 a month. So our edX, our free learning channel X costs us $5. And it's great if you want to learn how to use the system, learn what you might need to really go live. And if you really want to go live, you know, the experts in that are people like IBL Studios. Talk to them. They certainly can help you in that regard. But if you really want to get started quickly, get in there, understand what can be done in NetX. Um, you can certainly do it there. Um, the edX community, and it's certainly the documents, there are plenty of documents on MIT's website, edX's website. They generally have a Linux flavor to them. Um, as you see, I mostly do Windows, although we do have Macs and Ubuntu. Um, so I wrote, I just documented how we go about developing, uh, building up the, ed creating the edX platform on a Windows box. And I put it on Read the Docs and GitHub. So you can go there. Just Google Windows, uh, edX installation Windows. By the way, you must use at least Windows 7 Enterprise. It will not work on Windows Professional. And um, lastly, engagement is a two-way street. We try to remember this. Um, this student was just accepted uh, to all Ivy League schools and all four other schools she applied to. I presume that would be MIT, Caltech, and Stanford. She is the second student from her high school to get accepted to all eight schools. He did last year. And she had a comment in, in the CNN yesterday that said, um, I struggled with numerous classes in the past, but I guess what allowed me to be successful is my perseverance and my tenacity. So when we try to build engaging content, we accept the fact that it's a very much so a two-way street. And that's my presentation. I hope it gave you a feel for what it is we do at FEOEF and what we're trying to do. Thank you.